Hello students, welcome back to another class of social science. Now today we will be continuing with the previous chapter, okay? That is the chapter that we have started in the previous class. Now in the previous class, we have already started with your chapter 15, that is citizens' rights in democracy. And we were discussing about the fundamental rights. I hope you are still aware of it, okay? So last class, we have discussed till the fourth fundamental rights, okay? So today, let's start with the fifth fundamental rights because there are seven fundamental rights, as you are aware. So today, we will start with the fifth, okay? So here, the fifth fundamental rights, we have cultural and educational rights, okay? Now, cultural and educational rights, what it meant is, in your textbook, it states clearly that, okay, we have the right to conserve one's language, plus we also have the right to establish educational institution. That means every one of us, if we have the means, the resources, we have the right to start our own school also. That is what we meant in simple words, okay? So that is also possible because that is our fundamental rights, okay? So cultural and educational rights means where we have the right to develop our language, plus we also have the right to start an educational institution, okay? So that is to do with cultural and educational. Then the sixth one is, we call it as right to constitutional remedies, okay? Right to constitutional remedies. And this right to constitutional remedies, it is written that Dr. Ambedkar, okay? He called this right, that is Dr. Ambedkar, he called these constitutional remedies as the heart and soul of the constitution, okay? The, consti the right to constitutional remedies is also known as the heart and soul of the constitution, okay? And the reason why would be because as we have discussed in the last session, okay? If we feel that someone is stopping us from enjoying our fundamental rights, then we can go to the court, right? So this is the reason why they say is that constitutional remedies is the heart and soul of the constitution, okay? Then the last one, okay? The last fundamental rights is called as the right to education. Right to education. That means every in, uh, citizens, okay? Every citizens, we have the right to education. Then if you look at the directive principles, okay? In the directive principles also, it states that free and compulsory education should be given to all the children below 14 years of age. That means everyone, okay? Every child should be given education. And this is because it is the right of the citizen. It is one of the fundamental rights. That is the right to education, okay? So with that, we have come to the end of the fundamental rights. So as I've said before, the other five, uh, we have this already discussed in the previous classes, okay? So fundamental rights means right to equality, right to freedom, isn't it? Right to uh, cultural, then right to against exploitation, freedom of religion, okay? Then uh, cultural rights or educational rights, then constitutional remedies and the right to education. So those are the fundamental rights which have been given to us by the constitution. And as I've said before, for this, if we feel that someone is stopping us from enjoying our fundamental rights, then we can go to the court for it, okay? Now, since these rights have been given to us by the constitution, okay, we are enjoying it, right? We are enjoying the rights. So we also, we need to do our parts. That is, we also, we need to do our duties, okay? So regarding these fundamental duties, please turn to page 208. In that blue portion, it is written as these fundamental duties, okay? And many a times the students, they skip this topic. So I just want to make it clear, okay? So since we are enjoying the rights, we also, we need to do our duties, okay? So those duties are called as the fundamental duties, okay? And so those fundamental duties will be, we have the, uh, we are supposed to 
obey the rules and regulation, okay? Then the citizens, we are supposed to respect the country, okay? Then we are supposed to uh, make sure, that is to promote the spirit of brotherhood, that is every one of us, we need to do that. Then we are also supposed to protect public property. And I feel that that is very, very important, okay? We are supposed to protect public property because out here, many of us, we don't do that, isn't it? Even in the school also, you don't do that. In the school, what happens is sometimes you tend to destroy the school's property, isn't it? Now, those are public property and it is your duty to protect it because after you pass out to the next class, your juniors are going to use it again. So you don't have to destroy it. You don't have to break it down, okay? So always remember that you are supposed to keep it clean, neat and clean because that is also your fundamental duties, okay? So since we are enjoying the rights, we also, we have to do something or give something back and that is to do with our duties where we need to obey the rules and regulation, protect the country, respect the flag, respect the national anthem, okay? Or protect the public property and so on. So those are called as the fundamental duties, okay? Now, let's come to this relationship, okay? The relationship of fundamental rights and judiciary. Judiciary means we are talking about the court, okay? Court, it can be the high court or supreme court and so on. So what are the relationship or how do they work? That is, what is the relationship between the fundamental rights and the judiciary, okay? So here it is in page 2010, you can turn there, okay? Here again, they have mentioned five points, okay? They have mentioned five points. The first one is, we call it as habeas corpus, okay? Habeas corpus. Now, habeas corpus, that is, a, uh, that is a Latin language, okay? Now, if you translate it into English, it means produce the body, okay? Produce the body. So here, what can happen is, okay? If someone has been arrested, okay, if, for example, you have been arrested by the police and you have been taken to the police station, but you yourself, you don't know what you have done, okay, you, you don't know what you have committed. So what you can do is you can file for this habeas corpus, okay. Now, when you file for this habeas corpus, what will happen is the court, okay, the court will ask the police people, that is the policeman, to bring you in person to the court you will go be taken to the court in person. That is what it meant by produce the body. So you, you will go to the court and in the court, the judge, they will tell you what you have committed or why you have been arrested, okay? And if your, uh, the policemen have wrongfully arrested you, then you will be released. So that is what we meant by habeas corpus, okay? So habeas corpus means produce the body. So if you feel that you have been arrested unjustly, you can file for this. And in this, the court will ask the police people to bring you to the court. And when you go to the court, the judge will tell you why you have been arrested. And as I've said, if you have been wrongfully arrested, then you will be released. Okay. So that is the first one. Then the second one is, we call it as mandamus. Okay. Mandamus. It is written clearly in your textbook. So, mandamus means, again, if you translate it into English, it means we command, okay? That is, we command. And here, what happened is, okay, a person, a person holding a public office is commanded to perform his legal duty. If you are working in an office or whatever you are doing, you are supposed to do, you are Asked to do that, okay? You have to do your duty, that is your legal duty. So that is what we meant by mandamus, okay? Then the third one is we call it as prohibition, okay? Prohibition here, this prohibits an inferior court from exercising powers with which it is not legally vested. So an inferior court, all the courts, their powers are again clearly given, okay? So an inferior court cannot go and do the work of an upper court. They are not supposed to do that. So that is what we meant by prohibition, okay? Then the fourth one is 
we call it as certiorari, okay, certiorari. Now, this issue, this is read is issued to a lower court, okay, it can be done by higher court. So, what can happen here is a higher court can issue this certiorari read to a lower court to hand over the case to them, got it? An upper court can issue this read to a lower court to hand over the issue or the case to them because the upper court, they want to deal with it. So that is possible. So this is called as this certiorari, okay? Then the last one is, we call it as covarento, okay? Covarento. Now, this is directed against a person who has wrongfully absurd a public office. So, covarento is issued to someone who has wrongfully absurd a public office. So, all these are to do with the relationship, okay? The relationship between judiciary and the fundamental rights. And what we can get from there is fundamental rights, that is your rights, and for this you can go to the court, isn't it? So, in doing that, we have the habeas corpus, okay? Then we have mandamus, then prohibition, certiorari, then we have this covarento. So, basing on this, okay, we can fight for our rights. That is what it meant, okay? Now, coming to this judiciary, when I say judiciary, as I've said before, we are talking about the court, okay? And when we say judiciary, Judiciary is also one of the three organs of the government. We have already discussed that in the previous classes, the three organs, that is legislative, executive, and judiciary. And we have also discussed that all these three organs, they should be separated. That means they should not be under the control of anyone, especially to do with this judiciary. Judiciary should not be under the control of anyone. And the reason why is to make sure, okay, to make sure that equality, the uh, equality prevails, so to say, or to make sure that there is no partiality. Because, for example, okay, let's say the judiciary is under the executive. This is just an example, okay? The judiciary is under the executive. And executive means we are talking about the bureaucrats, the ministers, and so on. Now, what can happen is, Let's say a minister had committed a crime, okay, and he is being taken to the court. Now, the court, if it is under the control of the minister, what can happen is the court may be partial towards the minister, right? And so to avoid such kind of situation, it states that, it clearly states that judiciary should be independent or judiciary will be independent, okay? So if you look at the points, we can make out how the judiciaries are independent. That is, when you look at the judges, okay? It is very difficult to remove a judge of a high or supreme court once they are selected, okay? Then it also states that the judges, okay? The judges are appointed for a fixed period. They won't be a judge for their whole life, but it is for a fixed period, okay? Then in order to become a judge, what happened here is the president. The president is the one who elect or who select the judges, okay, on the advice of the prime minister. You are, what I want you to do is, I want you to read the textbook. Please make sure of that, okay, because everything is there in your textbook. But if you're not reading your textbook, you are going to have doubts on that, okay? So talking about that, then the chief justice, okay, the chief justice is elected basing on seniority. So the senior most judges of the court is selected as the chief justice. Then, as I've said, the president, he, along with the advice of the prime minister, he uh, elect or select the judges of the high and the supreme court, okay? Then the judges are elected for a fixed period. Then once a judge retires, okay? Once a judge retires, he or she is again not supposed, okay? not supposed to act in the court again. Everything is written there in your textbook, okay? So all this shows that the judiciary is independent. 
And as I've said before, the reason why is because it is stated clearly in the constitution that the three organs will be separated, okay? So that is to do with your chapter 15. So let's do a little recap here, okay? So chapter 15, we were discussing about citizens' rights in democracy, okay? We have discussed about rights. What is rights? Rights is very, very important in order to develop a human being, okay? Then we have also discussed about reasonable rights. Reasonable rights means where you can exercise your rights as long as you are not hurting the other person's feeling, okay? So that is called as reasonable rights. Then why do we need rights? We need rights in order to develop, okay? In order to develop an individual. And we have also discussed about how rights came into being. It was also introduced by the French. After the French Revolution ended, the French, they came out with this Declaration of the Rights of Man because they came to believe that all men are equal, okay? Then we have also discussed about the Americans. The Americans also, they came out with the Bill of Rights because they also, they believe that everyone is equal. Then even to do with the United Nations. The United Nations also, they came up with the Universal Declaration of the Rights of Human Beings. So all this shows that rights is very, very important. So even with India, okay, the Indian government also, they realize that rights is a necessity because it is the very sustenance of democracy, okay? We are living in a democratic country. So democracy means freedom where the government is ruling the country according to the wishes of the people. So to do that, the people also, they need to have rights. And through this, they sustain democracy, okay? So because of that, the Indian government also, that is the constitution, they came up with the fundamental rights. So we have seven fundamental rights. One is, we call it as the right to equality, where everyone is equal before the law, Okay, then we have the freedom, right to freedom, freedom to move anywhere, freedom to roam anywhere in the country. In the country means I'm talking about India. If you are supposed planning to go abroad, then you need to have your visa, passport and whatnot. Okay, so here I'm talking about India. Okay, then you also have the right to freedom to reside anywhere in India. So that is to do with your freedom. Then we have freedom of religion where every one of us, we have the freedom to follow any religion and the government. Since India is a secular country, okay, the government is not supposed to favor any religion. So that is what we meant by real, uh, freedom of religion. Okay? Then we have these constitutional remedies, then the educational rights and so on. Then we have also discussed about the relationship, isn't it? The relationship between fundamental rights and the judiciary. And there we have discussed about the habeas corpus, the certiorari, prohibition, isn't it? co warranto and so on. Then we have also discussed that since we are enjoying the rights, okay? Since we are enjoying the seven fundamental rights, we also, we are supposed to give something back to the country. And that is to do, we call it as the fundamental duties. So every one of us, we need to do our duties, which is called as the fundamental duties, okay? And in the fundamental duties, we have discussed that we are supposed to respect everyone, okay? Then we are supposed to respect the national flag. We are supposed to protect and defend our country, isn't it? We are supposed to protect the public properties and so on. So those are to do with fundamental duties and all these we are supposed to do because we are enjoying the fundamental rights okay then we have also discussed about the independence of judiciary where the judiciary is independent where it is not under the control of anyone okay so in this chapter we have discussed all those things i hope i was able to make you understand something okay now as always please make sure you read your textbook Underline those points that you have doubts on and get it clarified from your teacher when the school resumes, okay? So thank you for tuning in and stay safe.